I'm Christine Sagan. I'm a family nurse practitioner, and um, I live in Anchorage, Alaska. So before I came to Brighton Bush, I was pretty miserable. Um, I had, for about um, six years, not liked my job, and I didn't think there was any way out. I thought on the outside, everyone would think it was a great job. I worked in a holistic health center, and I had some flexibility. I worked three and a half days a week, and um, I kept justifying and minimizing my situation, thinking that I was comparing it to everybody else, going, it's not that bad. Um, but it was that bad in lots of different ways. And it continued to take a toll on my mental health and my ability to show up. So um, after a change in contract and a pay cut, I decided that I was done with um, that place and um, was looking for solutions. And I Googled around and I found Pam. So I was really looking forward to Brighton Bush just to get out and have like fresh air and super excited to be off the grid and not have to deal with Wi-Fi and, um, and just kind of disappear and be able to get back in touch with my own thoughts, not have all the busyness and the distractions. Um, and I showed up here. It was one of the largest groups. It was like 54 people. Um, and I really didn't know what I was getting into, what to expect. And it was super humbling to hear everyone's stories. Um, being a, starting as a nurse at the bedside 17 years ago, um, there was definitely a hierarchy in the hospital. Like, this is the doctor, and they tell you what to do. And um, it was always I kind of put doctors on a different pedestal. But when I heard their story, I was like, oh, you're just like me. Like, oh, you're human. You have the same crazy story I have. And it was all of a sudden, like, when I took that barrier down with who they were, who I thought they were in the medical system, and I had compassion, I realized like I could have my own compassion for myself and for the other doctors I worked with, realizing that we were all in this, we all really were the same, going through the same thing. It's just we had different tolerances for BS. I came to the retreat in May and it was pretty solidified by then. I had been working towards it. I was still scared. I felt like I was like 10% there and there was no way by the end of the year I'd have any plan in place. So I felt mentally solidified that I could exit. Like I, I really didn't matter really where I was going to go. And I was actually okay if I didn't even have a clinic, like just leaving was like, um, victory for me. So, um, I just got actually more excited. Like I almost feel like I came out of the winter. It was spring and there was this renewal of spirit of like, I can do this and I'm going to be okay. And it's, I'm making too big of a deal out of stuff and I'm just going to do the next right thing. And so I continue to find opportunities to grow and that next like six months um, I was out. Someone from the hospital approached me who invited me to use space at the hospital and um, I could build it any way I wanted and there was a budget for it and I had to sign a lease which I, I at first was a little fearful of and I thought well I'm gonna work and it will work out and it'll be okay and I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to work. So um, the space presented itself, which got more exciting. So I was like, okay, I'm really working towards this. And um, I put it out there. I started sharing with people and patients, like, this is my idea. And they started showing up support and helping me with designs and websites. And someone did all my photography. And um, I talked to my brother. I'm like, I need a name. And he came up with a name. And that resonated with me. And um, it was kind of a fun. It was like birthing a child. My boss eventually found out that I was exiting and I don't think he knew much of the detail other than I was going to leave so he fired me and I felt pretty happy and at peace with being fired it was kind of like that's so cool like I'm really free because I didn't quit you like you got to quit me and so um what was really funny was my last official day of the contract would have been the 31st of December and um my last day of work was December 22nd and I had planned on like working through because in my mind I was like well I'm gonna need revenue because I don't know if I'm gonna have any patients um and so the last day was the 22nd, which is a Monday, which is really random. And I decided to give myself the gift of Christmas and not work for four days. Um, and I decided to open on December 28th. Well, the funny part was my boss offered me my job back the next day with a, more of a pay cut. Um, and he knew I was fearful and vulnerable. And I called my dad. He's like, and why would you work for this person? And I was like, you're right. And I kind of just got back to that spiritual sense of being able to ask my higher power, like, am I doing the right thing? And I remember her this loud. I remember sitting in the break room and the, my boss had texted me, he's like, so are you signing the next contract? And I, I just sat for a moment and I heard this loud, no. And I was like, no. And he's like, and he's like, whatever. And he got more angry and I thought, oh wait, I have a voice. I can say no. And it's a complete sentence. You know, I would tell my patients, by the way, in a month I won't be here. And they were so excited. And I thought, wait a second, were you guys all in on the secret that you were just as unhappy as I was in this space? But no one told me. Um, so they were super happy. Then they were offering, people offered to work for me. I had all sorts of crazy offers. My space wasn't open. They offered me a closet for $200 a month. 
Um, I said, I don't have anything right now because I wasn't planning on being in a closet. So they offered, they gave me a pap table, they gave me a desk, I got a computer, and um, people showed up on time, and I had a full schedule for the, because people's insurance was paid up, so the 20th to the 31st, I had 40 patients that week, and they showed up at the closet, they knocked on my door, I let them in, I checked them in and out, I took payment, and I kept thinking, this is so funny because Pam said, do everything yourself. And I thought, no, no, that's not going to be me. I'm not doing that. Um, but it was a wonderful blessing because it was humbling. I was able to just show up and I heard their stories about and why they showed up to follow me. Like I had no idea they were going to follow me. That was my biggest thing. I was like, I don't even know. I'm going to go out there completely blind and I don't know who's going to come. I don't know if I don't know if I, if anyone really likes me enough to follow me or they attracted to the clinic or to me. Um, and that was such a weird mind trip to, it's almost like a, like a popularity contest, like who's going to stay, who's going to go. Um, but it was shocking that I had 40 patients the first week. What was really cool is those three months I worked in the closet and they would make jokes about the closet and it was just so humble and sweet. Um, it pay, it, the money from insurance came through exactly on the mark that I opened up the space that cost more. Um, and I had enough revenue to pay all my bills and pay all my staff. So what has this done for your personal life? and your sense of wellness, your, your health? Um, my personal life. So I would say that at points during the stress and then happiness, it, it kind of polluted all of my relationships. So it was sort of this, I'm unlovable and I'm not going to try. Um, I know my husband and I did talk about divorce quite a bit. Um, and I feel like in the last year, because I've, like, my spirit has come alive with um, who I am. I think it's easier for me to like show up and say what I need and and mean what I say and be able to like make amends and just like be real and not be afraid all the time. So I feel like our relationship has really blossomed and we're doing really well. So it's, it's kind of an interesting gift when you have yourself that all of a sudden your relationships get better. Um, I also, I started traveling when I was a young person. So that's one of my happy places is to go and see the world. And, and when you're working all the time, you take, I took little breaks, but I was like, I'm just going to go see the world. So um, it was kind of funny. I was in, so I opened on January or December 28th, and then like February 20th, I'm like, I'm tired. So I forwarded my phone to my brother who answered my cell phone because I didn't have a phone yet. And I went to Hawaii. I took the girls for, I took my kids for 10 days, and we just played. And we played and had no, like we didn't have to do anything. And I thought, oh, that was too easy. So um, in May, my kid finished her first year of middle school, I'm like, let's go on a trip. So I took her down to Nicaragua, which is really random into this like roadless island. And I had learned to dive when I was 18 and I hadn't dove since probably my twenties. So I taught her to dive and then I got to dive again. And it was just kind of this like youthful rebirth of like, oh, okay, like I can play and have fun. And then it, again, I didn't have to get anyone to go on call. I didn't have to worry. I was in Nicaragua. I couldn't log on to the internet and I got to just go to bed and walk on the ocean and just have quiet time and realize like there's so much more to life than working. Um, and so I've continued to make goals of like, what's the next trip? What am I going to do? Um, and I feel like it's just like a perfect balance of rest and fun. Like it's, it's intense being in the medical field. You're taking care of people. And I feel like I have myself and there's great outcomes and I really enjoy being there. But at the same time, I still need rest from like hearing people's stories all day and really caring and be empathic and so um and what's same thing other people have said as I'll tell people like well I'm gonna go to Mexico next week like, oh right where are you going go to this place and here's this and they're constantly like excited for me and want me to have fun and be rested and practice what I preach and I come back and I'll say oh I learned this and they're like oh great and it's just a really nice it's like having an extended family that everyone cares about you and they want you to be well so you can show up yeah I feel like I'm living a dream in terms of I've been consistently happy and now I'm encouraging. I feel like it's kind of like this um, obligation to the medical community. So in my own little way, I meet doctors who are on their own and I'm encouraging them or encouraging people to go on their own and try to create collaboration and community and, um, and just having the heart to show up and not be exhausted by it, but just like this joy of giving it back and like moving it forward. Can you speak a little bit about um, salary potential or income potential. So, okay. Um, um, for people who are scared out there in the universe that would like to know. So, okay. So, um, all right, money. So this is interesting. When I first came up with my business plan, 
I really meditated on what's my mission, what's my, my values, and what, why am I doing this? And over and over again, I would make sure that was really ingrained in what I was doing. And it's very prominent on my website, like, this is my mission. And, and part of that was because I wanted to attract who I wanted to work with. Um, and a friend of mine was why I said, if your bottom line is money, you won't be successful. And I thought, well, what else is your bottom line? I mean, it, like, really basic. And she said, think about what your bottom line is. And I was like, well, so when I said it out loud, I was like, wait, the bottom line is people. If, they're, if their needs are being met, I don't have to worry about my needs being met. They'll be met. And so I had this really trusting kind of need, like, I'm not going to worry. It's all going to be okay. Um, and so I... I ended up having a full, I've never actually not had a full schedule. I've had a full booking and I kept getting more and more booked out. So I had to stop taking new patients. Um, and then I decided to hire other, like other people to help out. So I've hired um, like a part-time doc and I find their same story. I'm like, what's your story? And they tell me their story, just like everyone else has shared their story. And then I think I want to provide something that's safe, but not everyone wants to be on their own. So I've had other people come to work in my space. So that produces revenue. And part of what I want to do is work smarter and not as hard. And so I've recognized other revenue sources. Um, for me, I chose to take insurance because I feel really strongly that people are paying for insurance. Insurance should be used and we should bill insurance for the services at top dollar. And I went to a talk and I, I used to feel like bad about making money um, because it's almost like you have to sell yourself and your, whatever you're selling. So um, I remember listening to this talk and I thought, oh, okay. And what I decided was I'm now unapologetic about my worth and what, I'm, what insurance is willing to pay and what I'm going to charge the patients. And I feel that if I lessen my, what I'm worth, then it, it doesn't really make any sense for me. I, will feel, I might feel anger or bitter or resentful or something. So I charge what I charge and I get paid for it by insurance. And then patients get better. They're invested in their health and they show up and they're willing to cash pay me. They'll do whatever. Um, and so all of my bills have been paid. Everything has been, I've always been ahead of schedule. Everything in the office I own, I own every computer, every desk. Um, and I'm not in any debt and I never had to take out a loan. It just came and all, everything's moving forward as, as awesome as it could. Would you say that your income potential possibility, <laughs> you don't have to give the number, but like that you could make two, three, four times what you could make as an employed nurse practitioner? Yeah, um, over yeah. your own practice? Maybe just say that. Whatever sure. That yeah, yeah. So, so what's funny to me is it ended up in the end, I mean, because of course I'm just going through the motions. I have no idea what the bills are going to be. So at the end of the year, um, I made five times what I made before. In your first year? Um, yes. And it was funny. I was like, oh, wow. So I just compressed five years of my life. I lived it in one. <laughs> so I can, now I have so much more freedom to retire early. And it's just funny because my bottom line was never, that was never my goal. My goal was to make what I made or, made, or, or at least pay my bills or not go into debt. Like that, I just, I didn't even, that was my basic goal. I never thought in a million years that hundreds of thousands of dollars would be just rolling in. And, um, but it allows for the freedom to not be worried and then to, um, think, dream bigger, be like, okay, what's next?